If they do that, they're going to be, the two will be very, 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 very tough to beat. Off the window, no. Roberts tries to get it. Shed for the win. Got it. This with 14 points, but he just looked, the way that he dominated the game was in controlling the pace and making smart decision after decision. Call the five slammer down. Go to pizza spot before or after. The dream is alive for Houston. Go Cougs. Let's go. Welcome in, welcome into another episode of Let's Rage Cooks presented by the Saxonian family. We are coming off a dominating victory by the number one ranked Houston Cougars. Not only number one ranked in the country, number one in the Big 12, the outright Big 12 champions for the 2024 regular season. Coming off the 76 to 46 victory over the Kansas Jayhawks. Joining me as always, Dayon Dunlap. How you doing, Dayon? I'm doing well. How about yourself? How was the atmosphere? I'm, I'm doing great. The atmosphere here inside the Fertitta Center was absolutely electric the entire game. It was packed from the brim. There was a lot of standing room only seats across the lower bowl. And from, I would say, the student section was filled 30 minutes before the game. And it's the entire student section Filled to the brim when uh, the game tipped off, the jump ball went up. Obviously, the tradition they have, the shredding of the newspapers. There was, it was like smoke, a cloud of smoke, but obviously it was a cloud of newspapers that went up from not only court on the court side, but all the way up into the additional lower bowl seating that's designated for the students. And it was just a loud electric atmosphere. There were loud moments. I would say the loudest probably of the entire night was when Ryan Elvin hit that shot over Kansas in the in late stretch late in the second half. But I think it had some competition with spe- specifically when Jamal Shedd got subbed out of the game late and they started MVP chants after the game. Uh, the players, the seniors in particular, all spoke to the fans and they were chanting one more year to all, every single one of them. And it was just an emotional night and and overall just a good way to close the regular season for Houston. They end the season undefeated at home. And like I said, with the best record in the Big 12, 15 and 3. They finished 20 and 3 overall regular season record. And they're gonna be they, they're gonna be a one seed in the NCAA tournament, regardless of what happens in the conference tournament uh in the coming days starting on Thursday. Man. They've been the best team in the Big 12, most consistent team on the Big 12, best road team on the Big 12, and also one of the best home teams in the Big 12. So all the way around, it's a huge accomplishment for Coach Sampson, staff, and the entire team winning the league in the first year, the best team in the conference. And it's only going to get tougher next year. And so um, it was a great, great accomplishment. I'm super proud of the team, the way they battled game in game out on the road at home taking care of business but today they just look dominant like really determined to really really give kansas taste their own medicine and how they um performed against houston at home and so the way that their defense started that tenacious defense started the energy the relentlessness getting the turnovers turning points into turnovers turn i um, mean it was a good sight to see to start the game and they just never let up Absolutely. It was just exactly what happened at Ellen Fieldhouse, only dialed up another level because Houston were really in control of this entire game from start to finish. They jumped out to an early lead. It was 9-2 to early, and it just grew from there. Houston's largest lead of the game was 29 points, and quite frankly, it never really seemed like Kansas even made a run. I know occasionally when I'm think back to that game in January at Allen Fieldhouse, there was a couple times where Houston oh, got within 10. I think the closest they got was within seven, and it looked like they were a basket away from being able to make it a competitive game. That was not the case in this outing against uh, between Kansas and Houston at the Fertitta Center. Houston was in control, and it, it, Kansas never really made a run. You know, Bill Self burned three out of his four timeouts in the first half or in a stretch and whatever message it, it just wasn't hitting with Kansas. And then even in the second half, it was never really a run. It was all lopsided and kudos to the Cougars because they, it was a statement like um, the comment Raun HD said, this was a real statement win for the Houston Cougars outright because or not Brian Roan, it was Johnny Casanova 713 statement statement game for the rest of the NCA 
for a team that's dealt with injuries, they've dealt with a whole bunch of different things this season. They're still strong. They're still dominant, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the NCAA tournament. They held this Kansas Jayhawks team to just 46 points, and they forced them to commit 18 turnovers once again. They did that when they played at Lawrence, and they played in Lawrence, Kansas. It wasn't a one-time thing. This is the standard for this Houston Cougars defense, which goes back to a comment that was said earlier uh, this week by Seth Greenberg on ESPN. He said the Houston Cougars won't be able to do that against the elite teams. I, I couldn't disagree with that even more. This Houston Cougars team, their defense is elite. Obviously, it'll be a neutral side games for the remainder of however long Houston plays. But, man, that defense travels, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. It started with Jamal. I, I think he was very self-determined to come in this game and um, play way better than he did in the last matchup. In the last matchup, he, he struggled tremendously. And I, I think he he definitely set the tone with his intensity. And I was on offensively, everything he brings from the pace to um, driving, being aggressive, to making plays for others as well. And, but like you said, I agree 1,000% with you, Andy. I think this defense travels, although I think it took a big hit with missing um, JoJo and some of the other players that they missed in the rotation. But um, I love um, what I saw for just from the Oldest and the way they continue to rotate and just play cool girl basketball if you've been playing this entire season. Joining us from Fertitta Center as well, right right across the other side of the club section, Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing awesome, gentlemen. Everyone watching us on all the platforms, it's, it's a great day. It's always a great day to be a Houston Cougar. Today is icing on the cake for the regular season champions. Coach Kelvin Sampson said that uh, we are a damn good program. This, yep. this is not new. We are a damn good program anyway since 2017. And folks on the national scene need to acknowledge that. A acknowledge it. I don't care if you accept it, acknowledge it because reality stands, stands you in the face. The Houston Cougars are nationally relevant for a reason that defense travels. And I'm curious, I see that, you know, Ron HD with a comment about the Big 12 is down this year. Hmm. So I wonder if one of the legacy schools would have won the championship. Would they say that? Of course not. You know, it's mad because the new kid on the block came in and took y'all's prize possession in year one deal with it and that's it i did not cut down the net <laughs> but that would have been something if i could but no it's a great day to be a cougar 30 point win i will say this i talked to a couple of the ku writers beat writers and uh, if you haven't already touched on it hunter dickinson has a dislocated shoulder and we'll have an mri in the next few days so that's all they know right now so that's that's a tough tough news for him he's still a hell of a player and you hate to see guys you know get injured in anything they do yeah he left towards the end of the second half in this game just a collision with Juwan roberts and chris you said it looked like from your vantage point that the his what did you see from your vantage point because I, I didn't get to see i saw dickinson run towards the bench holding his shoulder and then from there we went straight to the locker room i didn't see the Initially, I, I thought it, his shoulder popped out. But look at the replay. Big said his elbow or something kind of hit Hunter, I thought, on his muscle. But, you know, said is a strong, heavy young man. That weight came down on it. So he, may have, he apparently did dislocate that shoulder. So that's the early announcement on Hunter's right shoulder. So it's not a shooting shoulder, but still, it's a big injury. Yeah, definitely going to be something to monitor for Kansas, not only as they enter the conference tournament, but obviously for them, they're kind of in the same boat as Houston. They're gearing up for the NCAA tournament as well. They're going to be trying to make a run, but let's get into this game. Specifically, we're going to hear from Kelvin Sampson. We're going to hear from Jawan Roberts. We're going to hear from Jamal Shedd later on in the show, but we have to start with those two in particular, Jamal Shedd and Jawan Roberts. Let's start with Shedd, who put a, I would say a perfect exclamation point to the season when it looks to points, obviously not going to be uh, eye popping numbers off the bat, but I think overall top to bottom, he had a really well rounded game to end. Well, I mean, potentially could be his final home game ever with the university of Houston. I think all three of us probably are leaning towards this was his final 
game more than not. But he had 13 points, eight assists, six rebounds, did a little bit of everything. And he had a hell of a moment towards the end of the game. Kelvin Sampson took him out. He both took him and Jawan Roberts out at different times so they could get acknowledged by this crowd and multiple times throughout tonight that they chant MVP for Jamal Shedd and absolutely well-deserved because he put together one hell of a season, one hell of a run, and he definitely very well has put everything to earn a Big 12 Player of the Year award, in my opinion. I, I agree. You know, Jamal said that uh, I asked him, I think you were there, Andy, in the, the loud media scrum, that he's accomplished everything, almost everything he set out when he, to, when he showed up here as a freshman. One thing left, but that one thing, you know one. what it is? <laughs> that's winning that yeah. championship. So I said, well, okay, how about winning a player of the year? If I get that, that's good. You know, that's that's good and all, but one thing left is to win a – he didn't say it, but we all know what it is. Dan's already spoken into existence, hopefully, and that is to win a national championship. <clears throat> yeah, man. I think they, that's the main goal. That's the ultimate goal. And um, he's accomplished a lot throughout his entire career. He's been steady. He's been a winner. He's been a leader. He's been a, a coach on the floor. And so definitely going to miss seeing him in the Cougar Red. But appreciate it, watching him, watching him grow his game, get better and better, and him being even now counting on to be a – Counting on to be a score. And so he's developed year in, year out, just like all players do within the Houston system. He's been a great point guard. So I'm just now ready for this next stage. And as we're in March tournament time, Big 12 tournament, built the momentum from there. Because if you remember, the Kimber Walker run started in the conference tournament. And so I'm thinking Jamal's going to continue on the regular season. Um, momentum that they've built, take that into the tournament and, and hit the Big 12 tournament rolling into the NCAA tournament. And on a side note, but another indicator of the national relevance that the uh, men's program is now, there were some uh, talented young men, potential future Houston Cougars in the building uh, this evening. It's like, what is it? What are we at now? Afternoon last evening. So yes, the train sir. could continue rolling if these young men decide to uh, – join the program in the future what class one is 25 i think one is 26 and 26 i think he's like six nine <laughs> so but Jeez, uh, he's a sophomore and he's already six nine i think i think <clears throat> so but yeah it's just those are the folks that i know there were others here that i was told there was a lot of people know. in attendance there was a lot of folks here today you know i, I football and basketball the um ticket list for the recruits was fairly lengthy, but it's just another indication of where this program is and, and where it could be going for a few years to come. Enjoy this ride, man. This is just a fun ride, and it's just one. I, I'm not going to get sad if it doesn't happen this year because this program is just, they have that championship level now, and they have a chance to win a championship every year. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll, I'll take that. And one day when it does happen, and for me to say win, that's very positive coming from me. I'm not a cynical way because Coach Sampson said it, talking to us, you know, a lot of Cougars for a lot, a lot of years have had a, a cynical attitude, a defeatist attitude. That's when he said, those days are over. We are a damn good program. And folks need to accept that, realize it, and let's use that positivity going forward. For sure. Speaking of Kelvin Sampson, we're going to hear from Kelvin Sampson on the other side of this break. But real quickly, we'd like to welcome each and every single one of you guys that, like Chris said, are taking the time out of your Saturday evening for to join us here on Let's Rage Coops presented by the Saxonian family. We are the original Houston postgame show after each and every single men's basketball and football game. We are have been here since going back to the NCAA tournament run in the 2022 
season. So we've been around, like I said, the original post game show for each and every single Houston football and men's basketball. I'd like to say a big thank you to Steve Sexinian for being a primary sponsor, not only of today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs, but he has been a sponsor all year long for each and every single men's basketball show. And of course, we also like to say thank you to Star Pizza for being a secondary sponsor on today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs with multiple locations across the Houston area. Star Pizza is your go-to stop before or after the game. Of course, we also like to say thank you to Mike and Jennifer Pittman for hooking us up with some Star Pizza for the show. So we are going to take this break. We're going to hear from Ryan Elvin on his official, the official pizza spot of the Ryan Elvin fan club on the other side of the break. Then we'll hear from Kelvin Sampson and Chris and I will come down and, and, and probably scarf on some pizza while we hear Kelvin Sampson. But Let's hear what Ryan Alvin has to say about Star Pizza. I have favorite places to eat, but only one place can be the official spot of the Ryan Alvin fan club. Houston's own Star Pizza. Whether we're grabbing a New York slice or a Chicago style pizza, a salad with homemade dressing, or feasting on the Tuesday lunch buffet, my friends at Star Pizza always make me feel right at home. Three locations in the Houston area, plenty of room in the dining rooms, or the private room for your group. Plus, it's super easy to order online at starpizza.net. Don't forget to get a Cougar Red Red Velvet Cupcake when you place your order. Tell them Ryan Elvin sent you. Once again, big thank you to Star Pizza and Ryan Elvin, like you said, on that message for being a sponsor on today's show. We also like to say thank you to Vincent Harding for being today's sponsor of the ticker that you see scrolling at the bottom of the screen and that again thank each and every single one of you for tuning in and with that being said let's hear what kelvin sampson had to say following the big victory over kansas and about winning the big 12 regular season championship overall for our kids uh and our program the way we do things is we just compartmentalize when i heard it was the big 12 i said okay we're playing the big 12 you're, you're right but I wanted to wait till the schedule came out so I could see who we played first. Then when we play, found out who we played first, we said, okay, here's the way we would prepare for anybody we play. We didn't change anything. We didn't do anything different. Um, we believe in what we do. Um, Jamal, Jamal Shedd uh, was the point guard when we beat the Big Ten, Ten champ Illinois. He was the point guard when we beat Pac-12 champ Arizona. Um, it's, a, it's almost like people thought that the only schools we played were American. You know, if you notice, you don't get to the Final Four, the Elite Eight, or Sweet Sixteens without beating other really, really good teams. The only difference was playing them every night. But they had to play us, too. You know, we're part, we're part of the rotation. So um, our, our DNA, our pedigree, um, you know, toward the end, you know, it was a struggle because we can't practice anymore because we just don't have the bodies. You know, JoJo going out was a tremendous hit. Way more than you guys can ever imagine. Um, losing Ramon was a hit. We lost Terrence early enough that we could recover, even though we couldn't replace him, but we could at least put a plan in place. But losing Ramon and then JoJo when we did, that was tough. But we had to come up with a plan. You know, there's, there's no such thing as... Um, you know, can't do it, you just got to figure out how to do it. So, but it, it's just, it's, it's some things just gratifying. You know, I'm happy for everybody. Um, there are so many people that have an inferiority complex about, you know, we're the University of Houston. This is a damn good school. We live in a damn good city, and we're a damn good basketball program. And we, and, and we should never, ever, ever um, think that we should take a back seat uh, to anybody. And we didn't get like that this year. We've been a damn good basketball program for a long, long time. Not the last couple of years either. You know, it's been since 2017. You know, we could have went to the Sweet 16 that year if that kid don't hit that 40-footer. So uh, just proud of our program, proud of our, our players that came before these guys. The Corey Davidsons and Rob Graves and Galen Robinsons and Fabian Whites and Bryce, Bryce and Greshens and Justin Gorham. I tell these guys at least once or twice a week, you stand on their shoulders. They, they, they help build this uh, and put you in a position where you can do this. Our staff, you know, the way we recruit, you know, we're, we're hard, uh, hard-headed and stubborn, 
about uh, certain things, but you see the results. You know, we 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 have um, uh, great kids, character kids. You can coach them, you can push them, um, and we have a great point guard. And we have a great senior leader in one. What is Ryan Alvin? Huh? What was key to winning today? Well, you know, we have the advantage of having already played them. But we played them in their gym with their fans. And they've got as good a home court advantage as anybody in the nation. And they ambushed us. But as we were getting ambushed, we were also learning. You know, so we came back. I said, okay. Even on the back, and even on the bus back to the gym, I was already scheming on, okay, here's the things we're going to do different. But that was a long time away. We had so many other games we had to play. But, um, um, you know, Kansas is a lot like us. They're beat up, too. You know, McCullers wasn't at full speed. Um, and we played great. Bill said it when we were there. You know, that's about as good as they can play and about as bad as we can play. And I'd say the same thing tonight. You know, we, it was a great win for us. But, um, but more importantly, the important thing was not who we beat. The important thing is that it gave us the outright championship. And I found out on the way down to the floor, uh, I didn't realize that Iowa State had lost until someone has, uh, said it. I think it was uh, Hollis or um, Kellen or somebody said, Iowa State lost today. Uh, that means we're champions. I said, no, we want to do this the right way. We got to win today. But um, no, we have a good team. I don't know that we have a great team or any of that, but. Uh, you know, we'll give these kids some much needed rest and um, get ready. I have no idea. I haven't even looked at the Big 12 tournament bracket. You know, when you only have uh, seven and a half guys, you don't look ahead and just play play day by day. Jamal dedicated Coach? the championship to Richard Cheney. Where did he mean to honor his, his legacy yeah. all season long and his mother his name? Yeah, when, she, when uh, we played Baylor at Baylor, she was at that game. And so we brought her into the locker room and had her say a few words and got emotional. Uh, I love Rachel Cheney. Uh, I, I think about him every time I watch film from last year, I see him. So I have constant reminders of him. And um, his mother's just, you know, we've kind of adopted her as our mother. We, we've, um, and then Rachel's little sister. Uh, they, then they came to Oklahoma. And now they're back here today. So they'll always be part of our family. And, you know, losing a, a player is, is tough on everybody. What does Ryan Elvin mean to this team? You know, he's, um, when, I, when I think about respect, when I think about respect, there's nobody on our team that has more respect than uh, uh, Ryan Elvin. He, he, gives us, he, gives us, he gives us somebody that every day we can rely on because he never has highs or lows. We all love Ryan. He's one of my all-time favorites. Thank you. So once again, that was head coach Kelvin Sampson. Gave a lot of good different sound bites, Chris, like you alluded to in terms of the uh, program about the mentality around the program. And when they first joined the Big 12, all the noise around how is Houston going to be able to do against the Big 12 schedule. The comment that stood out to me as he was speaking in the moment was, well, sometimes people tend to forget that Houston is a part of those good programs. And yes, they're going to have to play a Big 12 schedule. But that meant that these programs had to play Houston as well. And that just re-emphasizes to achieve what they did, 15-3, and three, on the season when it comes to Big 12 play, number one seed in the big conference tournament, they outright Big 12 regular season champions. It's a testament to the level of the high caliber level that Houston has established here under Kelvin Sampson. Yeah, it is, man. And the consistency of it, like you said, since 2017 and, and, and so on. I mean, it's been continuing. And the way that they play has been consistent as well with the hard level. So, like you said, teams have to prepare and get ready not only for their pressure and their tenacity and how hard they play, but also for the Fertitta Center. We got to give a, a shout out to the fans, the crowd for showing up game in and game out. Houston was at oh, undefeated at home, so they they give that talk that gives a lot of credit and shows how big 
what impact the Fortita Center and the crowd of Houston fans have been at home. And so shout out to the fans and Coach Sampson has been doing an amazing job. And I have, um, I think the golden era right now that we are experiencing for Houston basketball will continue. I think there's something um, that we expected, or at least for myself, I expected coming into the Big 12. And they definitely has done that. And I think um, they're still going. Courtesy of uh, the, the great Jeff Conrad, SID, the conference awards will be announced Sunday afternoon. So we'll find out what the uh, hardware type Jamal Shedd will receive. But, uh, and Coach Sampson will have a his uh, press conference before the team leaves for the Big 12 on Monday. So look for that uh, post game, well, excuse me, that media video call posted on UH website, YouTube, Monday around, what is it, noon, one o'clock or so, as Coach previews the Big 12 tournament championship. And the Cougs' first game will be Thursday, March 14th. They are the one seed. Since they are the one seed, one seed plays at two o'clock central on Thursday, March 14th. And for those who do not know, March 14th is my birthday. So the Cougs will be playing the quarterfinal game on my birthday. Me and Steph Curry should have me, Steph Curry, and Simone Biles and Quincy Jones have the March 14th birthday. So, yes. My March birthday is my birthday's on Monday, March 11th. So look at that. A busy time here when it comes to the conference tournament, of course, uh, the our birthdays. Another year revolving around the sun, but on the topic of this game and well, well, specifically, Andy, let's go ahead and answer this one because we've we've seen. I think Jimmy puts uh, posts a few times, uh, but this one first. Do we think UH will be impacted without Tugler, Arsenal, and Walker? Of course, sure. The depth depends on the opponent. Obviously, that's going to be a factor as well. But they can win with seven and a half, eight players. But yeah. based on the opponent, and if the opponent has a lot of depth up front, that'll be make, make it more difficult. But I no longer, well, I say no longer, I haven't doubted Coach Sampson's ability to, to maximize his players' skills and strengths in a while. If there's a will, they, they have the will, he's going to try to find a way. And they have a chance. And that's all you can ask. They have a chance with these seven eight players yes it's not ideal but they're gonna get what they got absolutely and obviously the two spearheading of the attack for houston is jamal shed and jawan roberts but like you've mentioned they have so many weapons lj crier i'll go ahead down i was just gonna say i think that question that um chris just phrased i think kind of follows up right with this next question and um what do you guys say about just how Chris spoke with the, the lack of depth because of the injuries? You guys, and of course we want them to win, but like Jimmy uh, Schofield said, would it if they lost and would it benefit them? Of course it would. Yeah, um, conference to tournament. You know, I, I am not. It is what it is. It's a conference championship. It's a money grab to me for the conference and the big wigs and the corporate folks to you know network all that kind of stuff. If the Cougs don't win it all in Kansas City, I won't. I won't cry. <laughs> you know, if they lose Friday the fifteenth in the semifinal, that's okay. They're still the Big Twelve regular season champions. That's not going to change. They're still going to be a one seed, regardless. They're still be correct? a one seed. Period. They're a one seed. This wrapped yeah. it up. Well, I thought they were one seed. Probably clinched last weekend. But they're a one seed. Period. <clears throat> so if they don't win it, the Big Twelve. Tournament championship, that's okay. Get the extra rest. Yeah, Coach Sampson told us, Coach Sampson, Jamal, and Juan told us they are not practicing right now. They don't have enough bodies mm -hmm. to practice. So they're just trying to stay sharp. So stay sharp. If that means one more day of rest because you don't win the Big 12 in Kansas City, that's okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I agree. On topic of one of the players, or well, obviously top to bottom, all the players want to stay sharp. But one of the players that really looked good today when it comes to how well he had a couple moments, but I think Damian Dunn, top to bottom, had a much better performance, not just in terms of scoring wise, he had 12 points, but for the most part, now there was a couple of occasions when he was open, 
he was letting it fly, especially in the first half. Um, I, Houston did a really good job against Kansas where that ball was moving side to side, court to court, and they were finding the open man more often than that. It seemed like every possession that they came down, they were going to find an open shot. And when Damian, da- D- Damian Dunn had his open looks, he was letting it fly, no hesitation. And that is something that as the conference tournament approaches, obviously, of course, the NCAA tournament has got to be what Houston wants to see. What say y'all? Oh, he's got to let it fly. First, Chris. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, go ahead Chris. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. No, I mean, just like you, he definitely got to let it fly. And in times that he doesn't, he has to be aggressive and assertive with his decision to attack the basket and look to draw fouls kind of like he did today. And so just being aggressive and assertive of his decisions and, and whether it's to let it go or to drive and create contact because he got a good ability to in his mid range and get to the basket. And so just be aggressive and decisive. And if it's there to let it go, you got space, be a, um, be confident and let it go because we know that he can do it. Play 18 minutes a day, play more minutes, and was able to produce. And so I think that's a key component. He has the size that we need. Um, well, his size is a benefit, but uh, being a guard and being with the injuries that we have, I think he can. He's another vital piece, of course, with his role. And just has to be more consistent with making those decisions, letting it go, being aggressive, being decisive, whether the drive and not so much trying to pity pat the ball. And just maybe trying to do too much. Yeah, that's part of what Coach Sampson said before the team cut down the nets and he introduced the seniors. He commented about Damian. Damian Dunn, guy who will pump back a shot, pass up a good shot, pump back a <laughs> shot into a bad shot. <laughs> you know, Mr. Pump Fake, Mr. Pump Fake. He, he, he was serious, but his tone, he was kind of joking. But we see, we've seen Damian. He just pump fakes so much. He pump fakes himself into a bad shot. You know, the, the pump fake molecules. That's it, Rex. Thank you. That's what it was I couldn't think of. Pump fake molecules. But he took seven threes a day. And I think one time he pump fake, first he blocked it. <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah. he was open initially. Or he would make the shot. He would make an open shot into a much, much more difficult shot that was contested. Yeah. But after that block, Malik hustled on the floor, got the loose ball. Toss it, Damien. Damien launched in that three off the off the glass. It was just one of those days for the Cougs, man. And that's the beauty mm, and the curse of the tournament. Now Big 12 and the NCAA. A team get hot, start, you know, knocking down lucky shots, prayer shots, rainbow shots, shots off the glass. And you're like, damn, we lost because of that. Well, <laughs> that's the one and done beauty of it if your team wins. On the curse. But if your team is on the other end of that, man, this sucks. <laughs> you know. But that's- yeah, Houston got a taste of that last season against Miami. Yeah. I mean, on the topic of role players, how about um, Big Sid? I mean, he really stuck out on the TV just the way he was f- fighting and battling on the post, being in the right spots, uh, especially on the end on play. He created space for Jay Wan to come through, so his b- ability to execute – and he just looks real steady. I mean, he's able to hold down the fort. Who knows, Javier can get in foul trouble, whatever the case may be. Him is a, another key component because he's the only big body that we have on the bench. And he, he, I think he's shown in the minutes that we've seen him since JoJo went down that he can um, hold down the fort in the paint. He did a solid job against Hunter Dickinson. He matched Hunter's yeah. physicality as, as best he could. He started – I mean, Hunter – I'm not going to call him dirty, but Hunter throws some bows. You know, he throws back mm-hmm. the elbows, and if the refs don't call it, Hunter can keep – he'll keep throwing those elbows until the ref says enough. And said was kind of a few times, ref, ref, he's, he's, he's elbowing me. He's doing stuff. So Hunter got in his head. And that, that on the free throw time when said was looking to the ref, he did not block out Hunter, and Hunter got the loose ball on the free throw, and he fouled. I think that was Seth's third foul in the first half. Things like that he has to learn. You know, Jamal was was telling him, hey, just keep your hands up. You focus on boxing out, and we'll do everything else. Don't worry about Hunter Dickinson or the opponents or the refs. So they were teaching him during the game on the court. So that leadership carries through. I think Seth, he's, he's solid today, man. And, you know, hey, yep. Yep. he's – his he, the team doesn't have anybody as big as him. Mm-hmm. So if he can get 10 minutes and just be physical 
get a rebound here and there. He hustled for a loose ball and ended up, I think, LJ with a corner three in front of the KU bench in the first half. Just don't be a negative. That's all mm-hmm. Houston needs from him. Just, just don't be a negative player. And I'll, I'm going to answer this. We can all answer it, of course. But JB got, I thought, two of his five fouls, maybe even three of them, I didn't agree with. They were they were very ticky tack fouls. You know, one yeah. Dickinson more often than not. But he he does. I said it after the our, our last the team's last game. He still doesn't do a good enough job like Jawan does with his hands truly straight up, straight up. Javier starts and almost over his opponent and then goes straight up. By that time, it's already a foul because when the person with the ball goes up, the contact has already been made. So he's still got to learn that he's had one good game out of these last three. The other two, he got in foul trouble. So just have to continue improving and just get better about being vertical, as Coach John has touched on it. Just have that, that verticality. He'll be okay. He's They're going to need him. At some point, they will need him. But that's just bask in the glow of this 30-point butt whipping of a blue blood. A big 12 blue blood. It, real quickly before we move on, even though he only played 10 minutes, Jawan Roberts still had his moment. Or not Jawan Roberts, Javier mm-hmm. Francis still had his yeah. moments in this mm-hmm. game. Just early in the first half, like he, they were taking advantage of Hunter Dickinson with yep. Javier Francis. Ali, and you like do you him twice. It. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they were exploiting him. And even at the top of the key, when Francis got the steal, and he went coast to coast and he slammed it down and energized this whole arena. It's it's a, it's a shame that he was in foul trouble for most of it because I, I would have been interested to see what he was able to do in a full game because it seemed like Houston had scouted well and they were executing to perfection and exploiting Kansas with Javier Francis. Yeah, and it's it's another thing. You, t- you, you said a key right there, Andy. Coach Sampson, I think we've already heard it. He said after the loss to Kansas on the plane back to Houston, he was already focusing on what we can do better the next time you face Kansas. So he's already had in his mind what didn't work today, that day at Allen Fieldhouse, and what could work. And it looked like that lob play to Javier was one of the things they mm-hmm. decided to put in the, in the playbook because it worked twice. That second foul that, that Jay got. Like I said, I don't, I don't agree with it, but coach, you know, took him out because of that second foul. Sid came in and was solid, but if JV did not get that second foul, we might have, he might have been Lob City <laughs> because mm-hmm. Hunter wasn't either back pick. Jay was open on those, so that was like a different play call for them that was added to go against Kansas. Yeah, I think the, the, the main thing that we would want from him at this point of the season is to not put himself in a position to get some of those ticky tack ticky tack fouls because now the games are even more important whether it's the Big Twelve tournament or the NCAA and his importance on the floor or everything that he brings from the defense and offense. I think it, it's um, important for him to now be a, a, a sort of a veteran um, on the team. And, and but it, it, it's, it's it's hard to say because part of that is him being such a good defender and affecting so many shots, blocking so many shots. And so you don't want to tone him down a little bit. You just want to maybe play a little bit smarter and um, have a better recognition in those times when he maybe he should go for the block or go vertical, like you guys mentioned, like Jay Juan does really, really well. And just not put himself in a position to get some of those ticky tack fouls. But, I mean, he always have stretches, and they seem to be always be consecutive. He get a block. He will come down. Just set a good pick. Get a good dunk. Come back another block. And so he's such an important piece. Just want him to play a little bit smarter, but still play with the same injury, same tenacity that he always does. But just try not to put himself in a position to uh, for the ref to call that tiki tack fouls. But he 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 could be dynamic. Chris, you're muted, sir. Do I know the answer to this question? Is Houston the first? It. It's not, I mean, major sport, I'd probably say yes. I'm not yes. sure about uh, soccer or something like that, but we'd have to look and see. Mm-hmm. And I, really you know, I was I was, I was, was trying to see if uh, new Houston Cougar, future Houston Cougar, he's already signed, Chance McCarty, wants some pizza, so that's why I <laughs> got away from the screen there, folks. My apologies. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh find 
in a second. But real quickly, let's remind everyone, first of all, thank you. Everyone, first and foremost, again, another solid number of viewers from X.com, formerly known as Twitter, um, and of course, from people that are watching on our YouTube platform, whether it be the Potsdam and Jamma YouTube channel or on the Houston Round Ball Review. This is Let's Reach Kooks, presented by the Saxonian family. A big thank you to Steve Saxonian for being a primary sponsor of not only this episode, but each and every single men's basketball postgame show for the entire season. Of course, we also like to say thank you to Star Pizza for being today's secondary sponsor on today's episode and let's hear another message from ryan elvin and star pizza and then we're going to hear from Jawan roberts on the other side of the break i have favorite places to eat but only one place can be the official spot of the ryan elvin fan club houston's own star pizza whether we're grabbing a new york slice or a chicago style pizza a salad with homemade dressing, or feasting on the Tuesday lunch buffet, my friends at Star Pizza always make me feel right at home. Three locations in the Houston area, plenty of room in the dining rooms or the private room for your group. Plus, it's super easy to order online at starpizza.net. Don't forget to get a Cougar Red Red Velvet Cupcake when you place your order. Tell them Ryan Elvin sent you. Big thank you to Mike and Jennifer Pittman. And on that note, let's hear what Jawan Roberts had to say following Houston's victory over Kansas and the cutting of the nets to mark the celebration of a Big 12 regular season championship. Been there before. Just a different league. But, you know, all the hard work that we put in, uh, we knew it was going to be tough going into the Big 12. You know, the best conference in you know, the country, but... Um, just all the hard work that we put in from the start, you know, it all paid off. How often do you think about Richard Taney this year? Say that one more time. Richard Taney, how often do you think about Richard Taney? What do you think of you? Every day. You know, that's my big brother. Um, I was his roommate, you know, some trips. So, I spent a lot of time with him. And um, he's still living with us right now, too. It's great. How, how much did what happened in Lawrence fuel what you guys did today? Uh, I just feel like, you know, we got embarrassed when we went up there. You know, we didn't play our game. So um, just coming back home, you know, feeding off the crowd for our last home game, it kind of really meant something to us, you know, knowing that we have six seniors and knowing it's our last, you know, go around. You know, just want to play uh, tough and just play our heart out. Say that one more time. One more time. Like this, this project, you've been here before, but to climb up the ladder, the ladder, the ladder, the ladder, the ladder, the ladder, the ladder. And I just feel like all the sacrifices that we put in, um, you've had a lot of adversity with injuries. You know, Terrence is out, JoJo is out, Ramon is out. And um, it just makes the win a lot more better, you know, knowing that we only have, you know, seven, eight players. You know, we started playing Sed, you know, started playing Ryan. Um, you know, it just shows all the sacrifice that we've been through and all the sacrifices that we put in and knowing that we all we got. I just felt loved. You know, I've been here since 2019, uh, five years in, and um, especially winning like this, you know, this is a statement win. And it just feels good just feeling the love from everybody. When you got here, the program was starting to have some success as a coach. What does it feel like to be able to kind of raise the level of what the program was back then? Um, you know, a, a, a lot of guys before us paved the way. You know, and I feel like it's our job to uplift the culture, you know, and long long when I'm gone, you know, the freshmen that's coming up got to do the same thing and uplift the culture too. And I just feel like it's never going to stop. You know, it's just a winning DNA and just a winning culture that culture has definitely built here. How do you think Seth played today? He definitely played good. You know, he played with a lot of confidence. And uh, we told him, you know, just have fun. You know, it's not about the mistakes or the good plays or, you know, everything's going to come to an end one day. So... You know, just going out and just playing with a lot of fun, just having fun, and just knowing that we have your back. You know, that's all that matters. How much are you guys going to need him for the rest of the season? We need everybody. You know, not just him. We need, um, he's a big part of this team, too. And um, he's only going to get better. How much has he improved just in the last month or so? Just playing with a lot more confidence. Um, very tough. You know, big body, uh, rebounder, defender, um, special team, uh, special player for us. Usually it's a 24 hour roll. 48 hours, maybe, and then move on. Hey, I, I love this moment right now. I'm, I'm loving this right here. 
Huh? Are you gonna come back? Next question. Are you I gonna come back? Next question. <laughs> did, for you, since you've been here since 2019, to kind of see the evolution of, of the program. Um, when you first came, you made the 316 one when the first took you the first time. Now, that's expected of you guys to make the NCAA tournament. What can you talk about that evolution that you've been here since the program? Um, just, just having toughness, you know, and just having the will to, you know, not back down from nobody, you know, and, and, and I just feel like everybody gets our best shot. It don't matter who we play, you know, home or away. So, um, and everything, I just feel like everything starts with trust. You know, I trust Jamal and I trust LJ and they trust me too. And um, this team is very unselfish. You know, we don't care who score. Um, we just want to have fun with this, you know, and everybody has a big part in this and everybody contributed. Those guys get all the love, and the rightfully so. Ryan Alvin, what does he mean to this team, this program, you guys? He's a winner, and it, it's, it's deeper than basketball. You know, it's, it goes off the court, too. You know, he's a great kid off the court, you know, somebody that you can rely on, um, somebody you can talk to. You know, sometimes he cooks for the whole team, and it just shows, like, just the type of person he is, and um, somebody that you can really rely on. When he gets out there and he hits a shot, and the crowd is reacting the way you, you guys are on the bench going absolutely nuts. What's that mean just to see him have that success? One thing I can say is a lot of people doesn't know how good Ryan is. You know, everybody see him as probably, you know, he's not stronger or he's less talented than everybody else. He's really good. So just having him go out there and having that chance to showcase his talent, you know, it, it, it makes me happy and it makes our team happy. To just see him go out there and just have fun, that's really all it's about. Once again, that was Houston Cougar forward Jawan Roberts, who, Chris, when you asked him whether he's going to be coming back, he made sure to say no comment or next question. Next question so yep. kept it ambiguous, but we will see what happens. Obviously, he still has a couple more games for an NTA tournament run with the Cougars. But let's just talk about, we, we mentioned it on previous shows, the development that Jawan Roberts has had over the course of his tenure here with the Houston Cougars program. As you put, put up EA. EA Crabtree's stat via at ESPN stat and info. Kansas lost to Houston was at Jayhawks' first 30-point Big 12 loss since 2000. It was the first time Kansas scored fewer than 50 points against a Big 12 opponent since 1982, uh, which just goes to show again how dominant of a performance this was for the Houston Cougars. I saw some comment, I believe it was on Exit, they said, um, it came from a Kansas fan that said, this must be what opponents felt like all those years when I had to play at Allen Fieldhouse. And he said it wasn't fun. So Houston kind of repaid the favor for a lot of teams coming in here to Fertitta Center. And I think it really showcases what kind of home court advantage it is for the Cougars because it doesn't matter what opponent it is. It all yeah. looks the same. Um, quite frankly, some some games this year, it was even worse than, than previous years just in terms of the, how lopsided and how – I don't know if it's the environment, if it's the rims, but teams struggle offensively when they come play in the Fertitta Center. Big reason is the defense, the the defense of the Cougars too. But it doesn't matter who it is. The environment, the first half. What's the, what's the young man's name? El Marco Jackson, freshman for Kansas. He was overwhelmed. He was. The crowd got to him. The Cougars defense got to him. He was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. That happens. You know, it happened to some of the Cougars <laughs> in Allen Fieldhouse. That's the beauty of having a great home court, having a great crowd, a great team as well. It's it's just a testament to what's been built here. And I go back to what Coach Sampson said. Houston is a damn good basketball program. It has been that way. And we need to, I'm just going to, you know, those haters, and there are still haters out there, don't care, you know, don't hate us because you ain't us, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, the Cougars are an established program. They're now in the Big 12, the best conference in basketball. The only thing left for them to accomplish is winning a national championship, but they are going to be nastily relevant for as long as a Samson is coaching this team in this program. And guys like, who is it? I'm not going to name names. I'm going to give them that kind of attention. But a national media. Mm -hmm. You know, just acknowledge it. We don't care if you accept it because it's still true and it still happens. The coups are still nasty relevant. Deal with it. And if you don't, what did Coach Sam to say? We're used to cutting down nets here. It ain't going to change. 
I look forward to it. I enjoy it being part of this covering this team, this program. Yeah. Hey, one of the things I do want to acknowledge is that the story that Kelvin Sampson said right before they cut down the nets about the ladder, which correct me if I'm wrong. I swear I've seen that ladder in the back of Kelvin Sampson every, every Zoom call. Zoom, when he's doing the Zoom call. <laughs> yep. um, I had never heard that story before until today. And that was that he was given that ladder when he first joined the program way back in two. Well, not way back, I guess, 10 years ago. I don't want to make it sound too day but 2014 he got that program and they told him that's going to be for all the nets he's going to have to cut down whenever they start winning championships which from the state of the program where it was in 2014 to where it is now honestly it's a really cool story and and something that i never knew i thought it was i didn't put two and two together it was the same ladder that's always in the back of his zoom calls um but they've done a lot of cutting of the nets over the course of the past six years i think i might be wrong but i think that ladder, I don't know if, it, don't know if it's the same exact ladder, but his one of his um, folks he worked at when he was at Oklahoma sent the ladder to him or whatever when he got the job here. And then, you know, about the rest, you just ladder for when you cut down those nets and a lot of nets. And they, he's cut down a lot of nets here. And it's great to see and it's, and it's enjoyable to be part of this. Oh, I, I want to get your thoughts on this. I know I saw it earlier, minutes ago. Because I did post it, was it yesterday that I saw it about? Oh, here we go. This is from Rex. Because front office sports reported yes. it first mm -hmm. about the $2 million tournament in Vegas. You know, that teams like Houston and Kansas are part of, well, Oregon, in discussion Duke. to be a part of. Yeah. It's not final. We have right. got a, it's not final. And I'm kind of curious, as, you know, if that happens, I think this. For the inaugural one, it would be eight teams. And then next year, year two, 16 teams. Hey, I'm all for it. Vegas. <laughs> we, that'd be something, fellas. Let's, let's put that into existence and tie it into what we just talked about off in our private chat. Get some sponsors for that. And let's do Let's Rage Coups in Vegas as part of that tournament. So if you want to be a part of Let's Rage Coups going forward, there you go right there. Email us. You see it on the screen. If you're listening to it, we'll say it for you. Less rage coogs at gmail.com. Because Dan, I hate you weren't here with us today to be a part of what Andy and I again all over the building today, but on the court. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing, man. I watch your show. Keep up the great work. Thank you for doing this. We appreciate it. Big shout out Joe Mendez who met us on the court. Met, on the met court. Joe Mendez personally, yes. Mm -hmm. A woman came up to me. I did not catch her name, but she said, I love your show. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Man, come on. I, oh, I just it always is gratifying to hear the kind words from people from 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 our fans. And I, I guess I can say that they're they're our fans. I don't want to sound arrogant. I mean, they're our fans of this show. They're fans of Less Rage Coop. So it supporters. is great. They support the supporters. show. Supporters, they're they're part of the family, man. It's, it's all family here. Majority of us are Cougar alums as well, you know, and, and if you're not an alum, you're a youngster. It's a great school. Coach Sampson said it again. This is a damn good university. You get a great education here as well. So I'll, it's just great. In a great city. In a great, he said that too, in That's a great Kelvin city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in it's, a great all, city. it's all love. So thank you very much as we continue doing this show. But yes, Andy, put up with one more time. If you want, are interested in sponsoring because there are additional opportunities to sponsor this show. Email us. We're at looking for ragecoops at gmail.com. Go ahead and get more info. Banner spot. So like you see the, the banner of Star Pizza, we have plenty of room. If you go back to last season, we had a banner role that I called that sponsorship role. We have plenty of space. We're also looking for the comment section. If you're interested in sponsoring the comment section, obviously a lot of comments up, up and down on all of our platforms, whichever um, YouTube show or account that you're watching us from whether it be the houston round bar review or the pot time pajama youtube channel your comments pop up now on x like uh jimmy's comment there who who sent it from x so there's plenty of various ways to get involved with the show and even sponsoring clips you know if, if you guys want to be 
um, sponsors of individual clips from Let's Rage Coups to be posted on social media, like X.com, like Instagram, like on TikTok. There's a whole bunch of different avenues to be a sponsor for so uh, once again like chris mentioned if you're interested in being a sponsor on let's rage kooks reach us out at email let's rage kooks at gmail.com all lowercase like you see on the screen but as we begin to wrap things up here on let's rage kooks we got one more clip to show and that's of jamal shed that's much shorter than the others we'll hear what he had to say and we'll discuss we'll look ahead a little bit at the conference tournament the ncaa tournament and recap at the amazing season that it was because while Houston has kind of made it seem frequent, it is not easy what they did this season in their first year in the Big 12 Conference. But first, let's hear what Jamal Shedd had to say. On them, what we've been doing all year. They didn't get our best shot at Kansas. We got theirs, and uh, I guess we gave them our best shot today. Um, you know, we had a lot of doubters, but uh, we kept playing for each other. We blocked out the noise. And uh, we believed in ourselves, so uh, it, it's awesome. What were those emotions like uh, taking out of the game to that, to that ovation? Man, it, it was awesome. All the love uh, that this university has gave to me, it was awesome that I could give something back to them. Yeah, I did. Want to give us a scoop? We'll see. We'll see. A scoop? No scoop? We'll see. We'll see. What kind of emotions do you have right now? Um, a little bit of mixed emotions, man. Um, this is my first championship without Reggie Chaney, dog. And, uh, you know, he's been a part of uh, what we do. He's been a part of what I've been through for three years. And this year has been rough just knowing what, you know, what he went through. And uh, I'm just happy we got the win for him with, uh, with him on our chest. That patch means a lot to us. And uh, it, was just a, it, was, it was good to win, with, win for him. Um, you don't need the, we don't really need the practice. We just need to stay sharp, keep our minds right, and uh, get some shots up. You know, everything else will fall in order as long as we come in with the right attitude every day. When you signed with you, you told me you were Galen Robinson 2.0 way back when. Look at the career now. Have you accomplished everything you want to accomplish so far? Almost. What's left? You know what's left. Almost. Almost. How about being player of the year in the Big 12? Is that a goal? Was it ever a goal? I, this right here, winning it was a, was a goal. Um, everything that comes with it is just God. So uh, if I happen to win player of the year, it'll be a blessing. Um, and whatever comes with it, I'm, I'm prepared. I just want to give my all to my team, you know, while I can. So once again, that was Houston Cougars guard, Jamal. Shed, obviously, right there, you mentioned how emotional it was for him and for Jawan Roberts as well. He was asked about it, but the impact that Reggie Cheney has had on this program all season long, obviously, since the, the tragic news came about of his untimely passing. But clearly, um, it's been something that's been with the program in their minds. And they've had Reggie Cheney's mother at a couple games. I believe she was here tonight. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, but they're, I, I, they're really I, I spoke with her. And she she saw she saw me first and she said, you look familiar. Don't I know you? And I, when I said my name, she's like on Twitter. Yes. You used to write about my son. And then I just almost lost it right there, man. So but yeah, I met her this evening. Yeah, this has been it's kind of it's. He's been a player. He's been someone that they've rallied around all season long. And what Jamal Shedd said there in that clip, to the privilege of them to be able to represent him with the patch that they've had on the jerseys all season long has really been a big motivating factor for them and and has give them, given them a boost throughout this season. And uh, But it, you always kind of to, to remind you of the human component, the human side of it, especially from outside looking in. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we just see them on TV, we see them on the court, and when they're on the court, you know, they kind of seem like bigger than than life stars because of what they they always win. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're they're still very young adults. They're still human, top to bottom, in the coaching staff as well. And it's it's always a, a sobering reminder that you know that they, they've had a lot of different mental tolls on them throughout the season. Yeah, they what, have. What and I think watching them as well. I think you you. 
especially just hearing Jamal and hearing what he said at the 32 men in the chest, watching them, especially this year, you can see the toughness of Reggie Chaney when he played. You can see that them playing with that same toughness, trying to match that same toughness, that same intensity that he played with. And I think that's a um, – a self-determination self-determ- factor that they're using. But like you said, remembering the, the human aspect of it, how it is to basically lose a family member, someone who you spent plenty of time with, like Jamal also mentioned, it's his first time winning a championship without Reggie because Reggie was here his freshman year when they made the Final Four and all those runs afterwards. And so um, huge shout-out to Coach Sampson and entire UH for – Bring it in, as Coach Sampson mentioned, how Reggie's family is family, and they're also stepping up to be um, big brothers to his little sister as well. And so kudos to the entire um, Cougar family, Coach Sampson and staff, players, Jamal, Jay Wan, and, and everybody, man. Salute to that for sure. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's another example, as Coach Sampson has said plenty of times during media sessions, interviews, Houston Cougars men's basketball is a family. Mm-hmm. It's a big family. So it's just another indicator of that, another example of that. And, and you know, I'm serious when I when I say you guys, we're family. Me, Andy, Dayon, we may dis- disagree sometimes. That's part of it. We're family. LRC tuning in, this, this community, you guys are part of the family now. You know, be, be recognized out in public at events now. I think I saw it was uh, Javier's dad saw him the day before the game. Let's raise coos, you know. So I mean, little things like that, man. This is what we do. This is we enjoy doing it because of the support we're getting, and we want to continue doing this. We'll do as long as we can with your support. Absolutely, Chris. I can't couldn't have said that any better myself. And as we kind of wind things down, looking ahead. For Houston, Big Twelve Conference tournament. I think we can all agree if if it, it would be considered a blessing in disguise if Houston lost. Which yes, that's something that we do need to talk about. The Jim Nance banner, which I'm looking at right ahead, right in front of me. The voice of March Madness, 1991 through 2023. Cool gesture by Calvin Sampson, who also shouted him out mm-hmm. during his his speech right before they cut down the net. So obviously he's been he's big in the program and he's a big advocate for the Houston Cougars men's basketball team. And they honored him at halftime when they unveiled uh, that banner and, and you know, one of the other you know, from an aspect of alum, someone that's really helped put Houston. He's, he's been a big advocate for the university of Houston. Yes. And, and you look at it, if you look at TDCU Stadium, they have the Jim Nance uh, press box, the Fertitta Center. They have the Jim Nance uh, where they do the postgame press conference with, with Kelvin Sampson and all the, the coaches when they have events there. So obviously a big supporter of the University of Houston overall as a whole. It's good to see him get a chance to kind of be acknowledged without having to be unbiased on a CBS broadcast because wearing his UH shirt throughout the entire time and he was cheating on for the Cougars. So it was Good to see him out here. I'm looking at the standings. Let's see. What's left is Texas Tech at Oklahoma State, I think, is well no. The game hasn't gone final. Well, I'm looking at the stand. I, I don't know about the score yet, but the standings haven't oh. changed yet because there's like only four teams with one game still to be played. I know BYU's later on tonight, like in a few minutes, starting for that one. Um but it looks like as a one seed. Houston will play as in the eight nine. Was that second round matchup? Could be yeah. Oklahoma and maybe TCU because I think the Longhorns mm. have the tiebreaker over TCU. I'm not sure they do or not. I don't know, but all that'll be announced on Sunday, and, and then we'll find out who is bracket wise set up, you know, as the eight nine matchup for Houston to face the winner of Thursday at two o'clock. Central time. Yeah, what I was gonna say is that obviously in a in a hypothetical world, if Houston were to lose, it might be better for them in terms of rest. We all know that that's not going to be the case with this Houston Cougars yes. team. Um, <laughs> if they have a game that they have in front of them, they're going to try to win it. As the saying goes from Kelvin Sampson, if they keep score, they're going to try to to win the game. But to it's going to be a tough. 
challenge is a tough task because they do have to play TCU in that quarterfinals matchup, which would be the first game for Houston. I think that'd be really that'd be really awesome to have that rematch uh, against the Horn Frogs, obviously from earlier in the season. But uh, where can you expect from Houston in this Big Twelve tournament? It's going to be another gauntlet. It'll be uh, something that Houston is kind of familiar with in terms of having to win three games in, in three days if they do want to win a conference championship to go along with the regular season championship. Uh, it's going to be a very much tougher task because all these teams are really, really elite teams. If they if, you know face TCU, look forward to that. It'll be a neutral site, so I think that'll be different and probably mm-hmm. advantageous advantageous for Houston because TCU's crowd did a great job uplifting the Horn Frogs players in that game and at points in that game. I'm looking forward to the tournament. I won't be able to go unfortunately. Stuff happens, life happens. You know, I told Andy about that off the air, but hey, looking forward to we're still going to do post-game shows and we're still going to give you our insight on the entire tournament. You know, the Cougs are involved and Cougs, as long as the Cougs are playing, we'll be doing post-game shows for, for Less Rage Cougs. First time in the Big 12 postseason. Let's get it started. Yes, sir. Dan, you got anything to add before we wrap up? Like Chris and like you guys, I'm ready for, for the tournament. I think the competition is going to be as fierce as they match up with TCU. I think that'd be a motivation factor to to um, get back at them because they beat Houston at home and the way it ended, but not really being able to get a shot up um, to win the game. And so, just looking forward to it. Look forward for the rest of the season. Glad the team has been able to build. Coach Sampson and his staff has been able to sustain. And so I'm um, looking forward for the rest of the season. And um, as just we continue to wrap it up, our numbers and stuff continue to grow. And so anyone looking for sponsorship, I'm sure that we could provide some analytics to show our growth. And as we continue to grow and we have a, a growing platform that is um, well worth um you guys partnering with us to be a sponsor. So again, that's our sponsor email. Like you see, let's rage cooks at gmail.com. And so I'm excited, man. I, I love this team throughout the entire diversity. What they face, they get stronger and stronger mentally. The way they play, they come more together. This makes them more determined. Jay Wan and Jamal and Coach Sampson has been here before, losing players with being down with having seven, eight. And so I feel very confident in this team. Yeah, we're real close to hitting the 200 live viewer mark on X.com. Just a handful of viewers away, but that's pretty much going to wrap things up. I do like to thank each and every single one of you guys that took the time out of your Saturday evenings to join us here on this episode of Let's Rage Cooks following Houston 76 to 46 victory over the Kansas Jayhawks. Once again, Jamal Shedd finished with 13 points, six rebounds, eight assists. LJ Choir had 11 points and four assists in his own right. Jawan Roberts had 10 points. Eight rebounds. Damian Dunn got 12 points. Ryan Elvin had seven points, and he probably led the entire team in crowd reactions. Every time he hit a basket, it, this place just exploded over the course of the game. I'd like to uh, shout out or kind of you know, shamelessly plug of to make sure to follow us on YouTube at the Pod Summit Jamma YouTube channel because we have a uh, various different. Um, coverage very different um, videos including the senior ceremony we have comments from kelvin sampson jawan roberts jamal shed if you're just joining us and you didn't get to catch them live or if you want to go back and listen to them again and we're also going to have some clips of kelvin sampson already told the fans here post game right before they cut down the nets in case you weren't able to come to the Fertitta Center live. You're going to get a chance to watch that. So be sure to hit the subscribe button on the Pod Slime Jamma YouTube channel and check that out if you weren't able to watch it live or maybe just want to relive it. Once again, thank each and every single one of you guys. Big thank you to Steve Saxinian for being a primary sponsor to this episode of Let's Rage Cougs. Big thank you to Jennifer and Mike Pittman with Star Pizza for hooking us up and hooking us up with four pizza boxes. And every time we eat it, um, I, every time I start pizza, I always get reminded of the crust and how good the crust is. Can't thank them enough for being a sponsor to this episode of Let's Rage Cougs. And also, of course, Vincent Harding, a UH alum. Um, like we mentioned earlier, Chris Cougs helping Cougs. Yes. And Vincent Harding has helped us by being the sponsor of the ticker. Like you see at the bottom scrolling down, he's a real estate broker. And if you're interested in contacting him with any of your real estate needs, you can find him at 832 758 2712 
And that's going to do it for me, Chris. I'll toss it over to you. Where can people find you? Thank you again, Andy and Dayon. Houston Round Bar Review website, Houston Round Bar Review on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Spotable, Threads. Follow me that way. Thank you for those who are joining me on those new platforms. Appreciated. Follow us this week. Let's Rage Cougs after the Cougs games in the Big 12 Championship in Kansas City. Since 1994, the Houston Round Ball Review, local name, global perspective. And you can follow me on all social media platforms like it shows under my name at Dayon Dunlap. That's on all social media platforms. But again, we appreciate all of our supporters. Everyone took the time out to join us, join the conversation, whether you comment or didn't comment. Everyone that see, saw Andy and saw Chris and gave them uh, love for what we do here on the show. We really appreciate it. We want to continue to do this for you guys. And we're steadily growing. And so uh, we love the Cougs. We're all Houston alums. So we're, we're, we're proud to do this. We're the original post-game show for Houston Athletics. And football team has the right leader. Basketball team has the right leader. And the team and the school continues to grow. And so I'm excited. Love the partnership that we all have. To the, and as always, let's go Cougs. Go Cougs, I mean.